All right, everybody. Welcome to the healthiest day of the week. Uh, it's our health huddle. We kick off every Monday at 530 Pacific Standard Time with a topic of health. Currently, we're on um, week number three kicking off of our challenge that we're doing. So this is something we do every single week, but it's also something we're doing and choosing a topic of health each week as we're all collectively working on our goals and kicking off the new year right, focusing on core habits that we do that not only will help us move forward in our goals, but help us set up this year to be our healthiest year yet and to really keep evolving on our health. So before I even get into tonight's topic, I really want to give a big congratulations to everyone. I'm watching all of you guys submit your information in there, and it's darn good. I, I just got to take a second and literally just give you guys a bunch of props. Like the way you guys are approaching your goals, the progress you're making, the way you guys are encouraging everybody, just, I don't know, there's something about it. Actually, Susan, if you want to pop off, like I know you've been watching this too. Has it been pretty cool to see all the information and everyone pouring in and all the results people are seeing? It's been pretty powerful. I don't know if you're there, Susan. You were there a second ago. If you can't get unmuted, that's okay. You'll be on later if you can't get yourself unmuted. Are you there? Candice, I can see you. Can you give me a heads up? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay? Okay, good. So I'm good. Maybe we'll hear from Susan in a bit. But anyways, uh, I'll ask her that same question later on, is we are focusing this week on healthy sleep. And I'm really excited to cover this topic with you because many of you guys might be like, sleep, like that's a habit of health. Like we're actually going to spend a week focusing on that. Yes. And I'm going to explain why in here in a little bit. But we did this in order and I'm really excited about the order we came to it in. We did a bonus subject, which is how to approach your goals and, and anything that you want to accomplish. This is from chapters three of the Habits of Health. This is vitally important. When we focus on goals and how we accomplish something, that is a habit of health in itself. I'm gonna give some props to a bunch of people, but especially my cousin Tracy. My cousin Tracy has lost over 100 pounds on our program. Guess who called me up as we started off this new year? Hey, it's me. I'm thinking of new goals. What do I want to accomplish this year? And I'm just kind of looking at all areas of my life and I'm looking at what I want to accomplish. It was really good. And the more often you can come and look at the habits and of the habit of setting goals, the better off you'll be. And we also covered healthy fueling, which you guys have been really good on. That's from chapter seven, eight, and nine from the Habits of Health. We covered healthy motion last week. A big heads up and thank you to Candy and Casey Mitzel, who provided a lot of great information on the subject from chapters 13 of the Habits of Health. And this week, we're going to cover healthy sleep from chapter 17 of the Habits of Health. So again, I'm just going to remind you guys, because if you guys can learn one thing as we start, if you only take one thing away, is that it takes time to build a habit. So what you're doing today is not only helping you make progress on what you're doing, but you're making progress towards building a habit. And you can't just get rid of a bad habit. You got to focus on replacing it on good habits. So I said this to you guys probably four times now at the very least. So hopefully this habit of focusing on habits has become a habit for you. I know that might be a tongue twister. So try to say that five times fast. I dare you. We'll try that as a, a thing to do later on this week. So again, oops, I didn't change the slide on here, but healthy sleep. And a lot of people are like, sleep, who has time for that? That's the thing that I give up so I can accomplish all the other things in my health that I want to accomplish. And this is probably why it's one of the most important things, and I'm going to cover it here tonight. So um, just some general tips here as we kick off um, to help you understand like some things you should know about sleep um, and how it plays a role. And then I'm going to give you some tips, and then I'm going to uh, talk with, uh, I'm going to have Susan come on if she's back on now or figured out her computer issues and she'll share a little bit about this but just some tips right off the top is that women require roughly about six to seven hours of sleep and men require about seven to eight um, you know guys need that solid little extra time in there women I think it's just you program that way because you got to take care of us we, we are a mess and we need your help so you guys get need less sleep so you can take care of us because we are we need a lot of help. So six to seven solid hours somewhere in there, making sure that you're making that a staple in there. Anything going too long might actually make you more tired as you're getting more sleep than you actually need. And sometimes I think you guys have maybe felt that where you guys have gotten too much sleep and you're like, wait, why am I more tired? I got more sleep than I normally do. And then kind of sometimes the vice versa, when you're not getting enough sleep, you feel tired from that. Um, sleep is where our body does the largest amount of its recuperation, healing, building back of muscles and taking care of itself. So if you're not, when you're, the reason why sleep is important is like you might do all these healthy things during the day, but if you're not getting yourself good sleep, your body's not having the time to recuperate all the work you're putting into it, let alone the time, that, uh, the quality of sleep you're getting. So quality of sleep 
is greatly important, important too. So it's not just how much you get, it's the quality of it. There's things called REM cycles in sleep, and so I'm not going to get into it all, but basically your body goes in and out of REM cycles throughout the, throughout the night as you're sleeping. Many of you guys have tried tracking this on apps or read up about this. It's also in the Habits of Health, but basically your body gets through all stages of sleep and then hits a REM cycle, which is called rapid eye movement. Basically means it's the deepest sleep you can get, and it's when your body does the most gen regenerating of itself and, and healing of itself, and it's the best quality that actually helps you feel well rested when you wake up and if you're not doing things to help get you quality of sleep and set up your sleep environment and a few things I'm gonna go over you're probably tossing and turning uh, multiple times during the night which is not only getting you not the amount of sleep you want but it's not gonna get you the quality sleep that you want or allow you to get that REM cycle of sleep quality of sleep is very vital because it's like the glue that holds together all the other healthy things you're doing. It, if you get a bad night's sleep or you continue to get a bad night's sleep or just have a really bad night, you'll notice the next day your stress levels have uh, risen, your cortisol levels rise just from being stressed out and from the lack of sleep, cortisol has an uh, immediate response to your, um, basically the way you break down um, and produce insulin for your body that basically helps either store or um, break down fat. Um, it has a big bearing on the way you can lose weight or the ability to manage weight. Um, it affects your mood, which again, we learned, we're about to dive into healthy uh, relationships and healthy mind over the next little bit. And if you're not in a good mood, it means your relationships are not in a good mood. And you can kind of see how it's this whole downward spiral that you didn't even realize that sleep was playing a role, role in. Plus, not to mention, and my wife pointed out this out today, you know, we have a one-year-old. We're not sleeping that great these days. So she noticed that she has to be extra mindful because the sleep is not as high a quality. When she wakes up, there's a lot more cravings that are there that are not normally there because the quality of sleep's not there. So what she said to me was, I'm focusing on sleep tonight because I've noticed I've had a lot more cravings than I've normally had for no particular reason, and I think it's sleep. So really, sleep is, again, I'm going to call it the glue that holds your healthy lifestyle together because if you don't set that a staple in there, it really starts to affect all of your different things. The rate of your weight loss, how, how you feel, and all the different things that are really going to assist you along the way on this. So let me check the chat. It's just blowing up. I want to make sure I don't miss anything here. Anyone have any questions on here? Nope, just a lot of great things here. And here's another cool thing about this, and I'm gonna give you guys, as I give you guys some tips, is being on our plan, if you're on one of our nutrition plans, you should notice that your sleep improves dramatically. Just from fueling your body right, you should allow your, you should see yourself getting more quality sleep. So it's this glue, and it's this whole cycle that works together in itself. So you're getting better sleep, so your body wants to lose weight, you're fueling yourself, you're giving your body nutrition and health, so, you get better sleep. It all gets better all together, which again, this is why we chose this as one of our fundamentals and core habits of health. So here's some tips of things you can start to do right away and start to incorporate on sleep as we focus this week is make sure you have a really good sleep environment. Make sure it's cool. Make sure it's dark. Make sure it has a calming environment to it, you know, um, you know extra like um, comfy um, sleep gear, all that stuff you need. I'll get back. I put this down here later, but you can do eye mask. Um, and if you haven't looked at it, a lot of we have some program tools that assist with better sleep. My wife is all about her eye mask, no matter how much I make fun of her. And we also have some sleepy time tea, which really assists with kind of winding down as you go into the evening. One thing you can do right off the bat, and this is in the habits of health, and Dr. A is huge on this, is avoid caffeine later in the day. Caffeine has a half-life that will start to affect you into the evening. And even though you might not have the jitters from, you know, from that immediate caffeine intake, your brain is still firing on that, making it hard to settle down, making it harder to get quality uh, sleep. Uh, decreasing stimulants before bedtime. Again, one that Dr. A is huge on is if you have a TV in your bedroom, highly recommend throwing that out. That is a stimulant to your mind, makes it hard for your brain to wind down, and it's making it hard for you to uh, basically go to sleep, but also get into quality sleep right off the bat. So get stimulants out of your bedroom, uh, turn off your phone, wind everything down right before you go to bed. It's a big deal as far as helping your mind kind of ease into some quality of sleep. Then winding down the healthy water intake. I know this is 
maybe one thing that might be counteractive to how our program works. But a lot of people tell me that they have to get up a couple times during the evening to go to the bathroom because they're drinking so much healthy water. So being cognizant to take down your water intake as you get closer to bed and go to bed on an empty bladder, that'll obviously decrease one time you're waking up during the evenings uh, in the middle of the night affecting your sleep. Um, I already went over wearing eye mask, um, starting turning down the life before bedtime around, well, right now it's kind of pathetic. It gets dark around like four o'clock where we live, but we start winding down the lights as it starts getting dark outside because the reason why it gets dark outside, if you guys have ever been off in your sleep, you can stare at the sunset and it starts to reprogram your brain on sleeping. So it's turning down the lights as you kind of like wind down towards bed is a huge one as well because it starts letting your body know that it's getting dark outside. It's time to go to sleep. And then just having a routine of winding down. Um, again, a habit is something you build that, that assists your um, healthy habits. And so something that gets you winding down that lets your body know that you're starting to wind it down for bedtime. I have found the sleepy time tea that Take Shape for Life provides is huge for me. I start, um, you know, just putting my son to bed. It helps me out a, a ton. If I've had a, you know, uh, I do a lot of sports. So if I've been, um, you know, overworking or something like that, a bath with Epsom salt is something that's really good. As well as just reading anything that's going to start winding your brain down from stimulation and throughout the day is going to let your body kind of ease right in to a healthy sleep routine. So these are some tips you can go right off the bat. Again, this is all in chapter 17 of your uh, Dr. A's Habits of Health. And I thought as we came in here today, because Susan was so excited about this topic, I thought she might want to add a few different things to this subject as well, if she can hear me now. Did you get your computer uh, situation all figured out, Susan? Maybe not, maybe, maybe not. Oops, I guess I need to unmute her. That would probably help. I must have checked the box where people can't unmute themselves. One second. All right, there you are, Susan. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to keep you quiet. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'm like, I'm here, I'm here. Um, yeah, you know, you know I love this topic, Brad. And when we were talking about the core habits of health, I mean, like, we have to put sleep in there. And we're like, we don't want to put people to sleep. We want it to be a fun topic. But, um, you know, I've, since I've been able to, you know, walk alongside people and coach people through just their health goals over the last six years, as people hit kind of stalls or plateaus or whatever you want to call it, this is always something I assess. Because more often than not, um, it's something we kind of take for granted because we – we know we have to sleep and, um, you know, we don't put a lot of weight to, you know, the importance of it, but you guys, it's free, it's simple. And yes, unless you have a newborn, um, it's just something we, as we make it a priority, but it's one step at a time. We're building upon habits. And so, um, so I'm so excited. We're talking about it this week. <laughs> and Brad, you did an excellent job um, laying out. I wasn't really sure where, where I was going to piggyback on some of the steps that you kind of um, laid out. I, I think for me, what has become um, just clear over the years is sleep is just kind of our reset, just like our reset button. And we can create these really, um, these really bad cycles where, you know, when we, when we don't sleep well, and so we wake up and we have to have a ton of coffee, right, <laughs> to get through. Um, and then maybe a little bit of sugar, like the donut at the office, because that little sugar, like, gives you the little perk me up. And then that afternoon, you're so tired, you're not going to the gym. You're like, heck no. You don't even feel like making dinner. So you end up picking up, um, you know, you drive through and you pick out takeout. And um, it's just this kind of cycle. And I've been there. And um, in, when we get into that cycle, it is kind of an awakening of like, oh wait, I can break that cycle. And I think one of the things that's been most beneficial to me is to set a routine. So we, we can get off of our routine a little bit on the weekends. And so we can just, if, if we get out, you know, oh yeah, I don't have to work in the morning. I can stay up late. Well, then we end up staying up late on Sunday and we have to wake up really early on a Monday and we start our week uh, sleep deprived and exhausted. And we start right back into that cycle. And so really being cognizant of that as we kind of enter into our weekends of, you know, trying to stay on somewhat of a regular schedule. And I saw some people typing into the chat of like, I'm an eight hour, I'm an eight hour girl. Like we kind of know, like we, there's guidelines, but you all know when you feel rested and I'm like seven and a half to eight hours too. So I just work backwards. You guys, I know I have to be up by seven to get my kids on the school bus and make them breakfast and all of 
like that. So I know like eyeballs closed like by 11 p.m. Okay, so um, which TV off by 10 p.m. Like it's downtime. So everyone's schedule looks a little different, but it is about kind of knowing your routine, your schedule, working backwards and kind of planning for that. Brad, you brought up some of my, um, you, I, I didn't know you made fun of Ashley in her sleep mask. I even brought mine with me tonight, you guys, because I'm, I have like a love affair with my sleep mask. <laughs> I started using one about three or four years ago and like, I won't travel without it. I like, I, I love it. And I think what I want to encourage you guys today is start with one thing at a time. We're giving you lots of tips, but like, just pick like one thing to try. Um, you know, I sometimes use earplugs, like that can be helpful, especially when we're traveling and it's a little bit louder, uh, maybe in the environment. Um, also when I travel, like Brad mentioned some of the, um, I, I will use sometimes melatonin just to like, uh, you know, help me and do sleep when I'm in a bed that's not maybe as comfortable as my own bed or anything like that. But on a day to day, something that does help is you've heard people say like, I love the tea. I love the tea. Oh my goodness. The sleepy time tea is awesome. And really what it's done is it's just created a new, we talk about habit, a new routine at night instead of sitting and eating sugar and um, I make myself my little brownie, have my sleepy time tea. And I just created a new routine do for bedtime. Um, so let's see a couple other things. Um, monitoring is great. Like I find that sometimes it's just like we would do a log of our food. Um, maybe log your sleep, play around with that. Find like, Sometimes awareness is kind of step one to realize, am I getting enough? Am I not? And maybe logging how much caffeine you're having, um, how much water you're drinking, all those sorts of things. Um, in the back of your workbooks, if those of you that have these, there is a great sleep log and it kind of walks you through um, how to actually map that out. But just grab a piece of paper. When do you go to bed? When do you wake up? How did you sleep? Like, were you up in the middle of the night? Um, did I eat a lot of sugar yesterday? Did I drink a lot of caffeine? When did I exercise? Kind of start a little log and you'll see a pattern. And is, this, is there a pattern week to week? Um, I use my Fitbit. My Fitbit has a sleep tracker and I love it because it's how it, I don't know how it knows, but it's really smart. And it tells me like how many minutes I slept. And I love that. So, um, because again, like I know that I want to be cognizant of this is an important part of my, um, my overall health. And uh, you talked about healthy relationships, Brad. That's kind of our next core habit of health. And I'll tell you, like, I'm generally a very happy person. But when I do not get my sleep, like, my family's like, oh, mom's got grumpy pants. Or the saying, like, she got up on the wrong side of the bed. It's usually like, oh, you didn't sleep enough. <laughs> You're grumpy today. <laughs> and, you know, we don't want to take that out on our coworkers and all of that. So, um, yeah, you guys, you know. This is so, just like I said, one thing at a time. Just kind of pick something that maybe stood out to you today and be like, hey, you know, we, we don't do it all overnight, but it's just like pick one thing you're going to try. Maybe it's cutting out the TV or trying um, a sleep mask or, um, you know, just uh, maybe it's the earplugs or cooling your house down at night or something to, to just start that process to just induce a little bit better sleep. So awareness is key. That's what I have for you. Awesome. I love it, Susan. Um, great tips. I love this topic. <clears throat> and uh, I love the chat. I was just checking out. It gave, it gave me a time to check out the chat. A lot of great tips. A lot of people that have discovered it and a lot of people starting to think about it. So I think Susan gave a really good um, tangible tip. If you're not already thinking about this, um, or if you are, just grab something additional this week. Start working on it. Start being mindful of it. This is a week to kind of maybe be mindful of an area of your health you didn't even know was important as well as work on those first two habits. Like we're, we're still building on those first two habits. So this is a really good week to do this. And I was actually gonna fast forward to um, one of the slides here. This one right here. Susan, you mentioned the sleep being so important. I really like, I just kind of came up with the glue piece because that it, it literally is the glue to our healthy lifestyle. You mentioned kind of waking up, needing caffeine as a stimulant. Guys, how many people are not getting good sleep and how it affects our, our health and our cravings? Think about what's in the Starbucks case as you go into Starbucks. So everyone wakes up in the morning, we're sleep deprived, so we're going to go rely on something. I guarantee you most people in America are not grabbing a sugar-free drink. They're grabbing a sugar-packed drink, so you have, this is inducing that crash. Not to mention you go in there not feeling good sleep. You're not on your game as far as decisions. What's staring you right in the face as you go into Starbucks? all of their treats. And I can tell you, I think about 90% of it is straight carbs and not something that's going to fuel your body. So this is the world that we live in and understanding these things sets you up for so much more success than you even realize. So Susan, I'm glad we went in there. Oops, I'm going the wrong way in my slides. So this is a really good topic of health. And I really like where we went with it. Um, and another additional tip on this 
and this is why going back to the very beginning of where we started, I have found, and Susan, I don't know if you want to comment on this, being purposeful in our life is one of the main things that help us become our best. So right now we're being on purpose in our health, but we're also encouraging you to be purposeful in many areas of your life. I notice that I also get better sleep when I have purpose on what I'm trying to accomplish. I notice I don't need as much. I notice I sleep better. I notice I dream better and I wake up ready to hit the floor running in the morning as long as I follow the other habits of sleep. Have you noticed that having purpose or goals have helped you get better sleep? Yeah, you know, I think um, because I love what I what I get to do every day, um, I look forward to eat each day. It's not like, oh no, it's set. I don't ever have the Sunday night blues. I have to go, you know, back to my job tomorrow. So yeah, I think it's it's that. It's just um, you know, each day you're you're fulfilled. And then part of part of my purpose too is to. Um, live a healthy life. And so I just have made these pillars of, um, you know, what we do. And like I said, just kind of setting a routine. Like I don't, you know, I don't always want to grow up. Like, you know, my kids have bedtime. I shouldn't have to have a bedtime. <laughs> but in reality, like mama needs a bedtime too. And, um, you know, it's, and so I think just knowing that that makes me a better mom um, and a better coach to, um, to kind of set out each day. So for sure. I love it. So those are the tips I have for you. I want to congratulate everyone on a solid two weeks. It is very apparent you guys are making progress. I'm seeing the verbiage. I'm seeing the post and you guys all deserve a ton of credit. And I'm so glad that we're starting out this new year together. Let's kick off week three. Let's really spend some time focusing on those first two habits that we thought of this week. And if you are not thinking about healthy sleep, Try out a few of those tips that Susan gave you this week. Really good stuff or some of the tips that people commented in the chat there. And then let's make this an even better week. You might notice that a lot of things start to really come into place as you start to focus on the other half of the day a little bit more, the ones you weren't even thinking about. So good, happy, happy sleeping, happy dreaming to you all. And I look forward to seeing a much brighter, bushy-tailed group of people as we focus on uh, the healthy sleep this week. Thanks for everyone that tuned in. Uh, for those that are coaches, we have a call with our medical director here in about five minutes, so we'll tune into that. Um, really exciting stuff. This new year's kicking off with a great bang, and a lot of people are getting healthy, and that's what we want to see. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in once again, and we'll catch you all later. Have a great evening, everyone.